Hello everyone, I'm Alexander Trofimenkov and today we're going to make my own version of the classic carrot cake. And if you're in doubt that a carrot cake can be super tasty, today I'll prove you that it can be just that. This easy to make product will consist of the chiffon sponge cake with a special soft texture, a carrot crema, a cream cheese crema and a cream cheese chantilly. The festive look of the cake will be enhanced by the carrot-coloured chiffon sponge, which I will use to wrap the sides with. I'll decorate the surface of the cake with airy domes of silky chantilly cream, which will be topped with slices of candied carrots and a bit of fresh basil. I invite you to come and join me in creating and assembling this beautiful carrot cake. Let's get started! Now I'll show you how to make the carrot puree, which will be used as a component of our carrot cake. To make this puree, I'll need not only the carrots, which are over here, already washed, but also a bunch of other ingredients. Here I have the orange juice, freshly squeezed, then a little bit of golden raisins, some spices, here I have the whole cinnamon stick, a little bit of turmeric powder for some extra orange color, and a little bit of flavor. Then the green cardamom over here, the dark rum for some extra caramel flavor, butter, just regular butter, 82% fat, then a little bit of baking soda, which will help me soften the carrots faster. And finally, the vanilla pot to add some extra flavor and nice little vanilla dots inside our carrot puree. So I'll start the preparation by peeling the carrots and cutting them into little chunks so that they are easier to cook and soften. So first I'll peel the carrots like this. And then I'll cut the carrots into little pieces, like this. After cutting the carrots, I'll transfer them into the saucepan and then we'll add the rest of the ingredients except the orange juice. I'll need it later to dilute the puree a little bit. So first I'll put the carrots. Then I add the raisins, then the turmeric powder, the rum, then the baking soda. the cinnamon stick, then the cardamom, the butter, and finally the seeds of the vanilla pot. So I split the pot in half, I remove the seeds, Now I'll add the seeds to the carrots, as well as the pot itself. It has lots of flavor and I don't want to lose it. Now I'll start cooking all these ingredients together on low to medium heat, covered with a lid. And like this, I'll cook this mixture for about 15 minutes until the carrots soften completely. And after that, I'll be able to blend them into a puree. If you have a pressure cooker, that would be perfect. The carrots will cook much faster and their color will remain beautifully orange 
and really bright. But this recipe works perfectly even in a regular saucepan. After about 15 minutes of cooking on medium heat, under a lid, the carrots are now properly cooked and softened. I'll show you how they look. So, as you can see, the liquid has almost evaporated completely and the carrots are really soft and like they look glazed. They're shiny, beautiful, perfect. So now I remove it from heat. We'll remove the spices from here and then we'll add the orange juice and blend everything with the blender into a puree. So now I remove vanilla. I remove the cinnamon. Now I add the orange juice here. And now I'll transfer all this mixture into a jug. I'm using a tall jug like this. It will be easier for me to blend the mixture in this kind of vessel. And now I'll blend everything with a hand blender until completely smooth. After a few minutes of blending, the carrots turn into a puree. It looks like this. It is soft, smooth, but still, if you remember, we have some cardamom inside. So I'll need to strain this mixture to make sure it is completely lump-free and really homogeneous. After straining, the puree is ready. It looks like this. It has a vibrant orange color, lovely texture. It is very smooth now, and it is ready to be used to make the carrot crumble. Now I'll start the preparation of the cream cheese chantilly, which will be used as a decoration for our carrot cake. As you know, carrot cake is usually a combination of moist carrot sponges and cream cheese frosting. This recipe is a lighter version of the carrot cake, which means I need a lighter version of the frosting. So this recipe is perfect. It is light, creamy and pipes beautifully. To make this cream cheese chantilly, I need the following components. A little bit of whole milk, you can also use any kind of liquid in this recipe instead of milk. Then a little bit of regular sugar to uh, sweeten up the preparation. Then some gelatin, a little bit of gelatin mass to stabilize the texture, make it more pipeable, easier to whip without over whipping, without breaking the texture. The cream cheese, obviously in the cream cheese chantilly you need some cream cheese. This is a quality 
full fat cream cheese. It has a firm texture and full flavor of cream cheese. But if you don't have it, you can use the spreadable version, which is available in any grocery store and it will work perfectly as well. And finally, the large portion of cold whipping cream straight from the fridge. The cold whipping cream will be added last. It will not be heated in any way in order to preserve the fat molecules which are responsible for aeration and stabilization of the Chantilly cream. So now I'll start the preparation by heating the milk, the gelatin mass and the sugar and the saucepan until about 80 degrees Celsius. You can also boil this mixture. The idea is to dissolve the gelatin and sugar. So first I'll put the sugar in the saucepan, then the gelatin mass, and finally the milk. So now when the gelatin and sugar are completely melted, I'll remove the saucepan from heat and we'll transfer this mixture into a jug together with the cream cheese. I'll start by putting cream cheese first so that it does not create a splash when I put it inside the liquid. And then I pour the a milk with sugar and gelatin mass on top. Now I'll blend these ingredients with a hand blender to ensure they are properly mixed, the gelatin is properly combined with the cream cheese and we have a good emulsion between the fats which are present in the cream cheese and the liquids from the milk. So after blending, the mixture turns rather liquid like this. I'm sure it is properly combined. There are no lumps of cream cheese, no pieces of gelatin which is not melted. After blending, everything is perfectly smooth. Now I need to combine this mixture with the cold whipping cream. I'll do this in a separate mixing bowl. So first I'll pour the hot mixture of milk, sugar, gelatin mass and the cream cheese inside. And then I add the cold whipping cream. And now I'll mix all this with a spatula just to combine. There is no need to blend. If you blend the cold whipping cream, you'll start breaking the fat molecules and we need them for aeration and stabilization. So it is important to mix briefly and that's it. So now the Chantilly cream is almost done. I'll cover it with the plastic wrap touching the surface at this point and we'll put it in the fridge for six hours minimum to stabilize. Best to prepare it in advance, like a day in advance, so that it has time to stabilize in the fridge overnight. This is perfect. And this time is necessary for the gelatin to create structure, for the fat molecules to set, especially the ones which are present in the cream cheese. And like this, we're gonna have the Chantilly cream, which is creamy, stable, which is capable of aeration, and uh, will have no problems when whipping and piping. So six hours minimum, in the fridge and then it will be ready to use.
So now I'll start the preparation of the cream cheese crema, which will be used as a filling, as another filling for our carrot cake. To make this crema, I'll use the following components. First of all, the whipping cream, then the sugar to sweeten the preparation a little bit, then a little bit of the Cointreau liquor. This is the orange liquor, which will be used to flavor our cream cheese crema. You can skip this ingredient if you don't consume alcohol or replace it with the same quantity of the orange juice, which is also present in this recipe. Here is the freshly squeezed orange juice. So if you are not using the uh, liquor, simply add more of the orange juice. Then I have the egg yolks to thicken the preparation and make its texture creamy. The egg yolks, they contain lecithin naturally and they will help to combine the fats which are present in the cream cheese and the whipping cream with the liquids which are here in the orange juice and the whipping cream as well. Then I have the gelatin mass a little bit to stabilize the mixture and obviously the cream cheese. There is no cream cheese creme without the cream cheese. Here it is. It's a full fat original cream cheese which has a rather hard texture. Um, it has lots of flavor. This is why I'm using it but if you don't have it you can use the regular spreadable version of the cream cheese which is available in any supermarket and it will work perfectly as well. So to start the preparation I'll mix the egg yolks, the orange juice and the sugar in a separate mixing bowl over here. So I'll combine the sugar, then the egg yolks, and the orange juice. Now I'll combine these ingredients with a whisk so that they are combined properly. Now I'll set this mixture aside for a while and we'll start warming up the whipping cream. I need to warm it until about 80 degrees Celsius. It is okay to boil it at this point. And then I will pour the whipping cream gradually onto the mixture of the egg yolks, sugar and the orange juice. Okay, so the whipping cream is warm now and I can proceed to the next step. Now I will pour it on top of the egg yolks, sugar and orange juice mixture. I'll be doing this gradually to raise the temperature of this mixture gradually and not to overcook the egg yolks. This is crucial. There is no need to boil uh, or cook the egg yolks completely. We need to cook them very gently. This is why I'll be pouring this mixture gradually over here and then we'll transfer everything back and we'll cook it gently on the stove. Now I'll transfer this mixture back to the saucepan and we'll continue cooking on low to medium heat until the mixture thickens. Its temperature has to reach 82, 84 degrees Celsius. This is the pasteurization temperature of the egg yolks in this mixture and we need to reach it to make this crema safe to consume and to create a proper elastic, flexible and creamy texture. So to cook this creme properly, you need to stir the mixture frequently, both in the center and on the sides to make sure there are no burnt parts, there are no pieces of cooked egg yolk inside and the mixture is completely smooth and homogeneous. At the same time, I'll be checking the doneness of the creme using the probe thermometer, the digital probe thermometer like this, and it will help me to obtain the perfect texture.
Okay, so now the crema reached the proper temperature. It is 83 degrees Celsius. It is ready now. It has the proper, a little bit thickened texture. Perfect, and it's amazingly smooth and homogeneous. So now the next step in preparing the cream cheese crema is to add the gelting mass and the orange liquor inside this cooked orange custard. So first I'll add the gelting mass. Then the liquor. And I mix everything well until the gelatin dissolves. There is no need to melt the gelatin in advance because the custard is hot, it is straight uh, from the stove, so it will definitely melt. Now the final step in preparing the cream cheese crema is to mix this custard with the cream cheese. To do this, I'll use a jug over here. It will be very convenient to blend these ingredients in a jug with a hand blender. So first, I'll put the cream cheese into the jug. The cream cheese is cold, taken straight from the fridge. There is no need to warm it up previously. Now I'll strain the cooked custard directly on top of the cream cheese, just in case, just to make sure there are no lumps of egg yolk, no lumps of some orange pulp and so on, and so that the crema is completely smooth and homogeneous. You can skip this step. Um, blending will be sufficient to create the homogeneous texture, but I prefer straining and blending, both. Now using a hand blender, I'll combine all these components in a jug in order to have a really beautiful texture, a nice combination of the fats and liquids, the proper emulsion, and like this, I'll be sure that the crema has a proper texture. So now the cream cheese crema is ready. It will have a rather liquid texture after blending like this. It is perfect, it is meant to be like this at this point. Now I'll transfer it into a clean mixing bowl. We'll cover it with a plastic wrap touching the surface and we'll put it in the fridge overnight. Six hours is minimum, but 12 is preferable. So better to make this uh, crema in advance so that it has time to stabilize and the next day you'll be able to use it. So now, when I have the carrot puree ready, I can proceed to making the carrot crema. To make it, I'll need, apart from the carrot puree, obviously, a few other components. First of all, the milk. It's a regular full-fat milk, but you can use another type of liquid if you wish. Then, a little bit of sugar, and two textural agents. The NH pectin, to thicken the preparation, and the Naturemul, natural emulsifier. It is a citrus fiber, which will help me bind 
fat, which is present in the carrot puree. Remember we had uh, butter added to the carrots during cooking. And the water, which is present in the carrots and the milk. Emulsifier is a vital component in crema, in any crema recipe. Normally we have egg yolks. In this recipe, I did not want to use them because they impart their own flavor into the preparation and I don't think they match really well with carrots. So this is why I decided using this uh, Nature Mool uh, ingredient. However, it is not as widely distributed as egg yolks. So in case you cannot find it, you can replace it with lecithin, liquid lecithin or powdered lecithin made from sunflower or soy. It works almost the same way. You'll need the same quantity and those components will also help you bind water and fat and create a nice, creamy and stable texture. If you cannot find neither the lecithin nor the Nature Mool, you can use egg yolks. They work perfectly in this recipe. You'll need about 12 to 15% of egg yolks in the total preparation. And like this, you'll have a creamy and perfectly cooked perfectly thickened texture. So, I'll start the preparation. First of all, I need to mix the dry ingredients together. The sugar, Nature Mool and Pectin NH. If you don't have the pectin, then in such case, you can use regular cornstarch. You'll need about 4% of cornstarch in the total recipe to thicken it and make it creamy. It will resemble regular pastry cream in such case. It will have a creamy texture. It will be made with carrot puree and milk instead of um, regular milk or the mixture of whipping cream and milk. And um, in the combination with egg yolks, it will be very, very similar in terms of texture and in terms of preparation method uh, to the pastry cream. Now I'll add the Nature Mool to the sugar and pectin. And I mix everything well with a whisk to prevent lump formation. Then I'll add the puree and the milk in the saucepan. And after that, we'll be adding the mixture of dry ingredients gradually, while whisking constantly. This will help me prevent formation of lumps and it will ensure that the pectin and Nature Mool are properly hydrated. So first I put the puree. Then I add the milk. And now I start adding the mixture of dry ingredients gradually. Now I'll start cooking this mixture on medium heat. I'll need to bring it to a boil and cook for about 30 seconds. This will help me activate the pectin and Nature Mool and make the mixture thicken and jellify properly. While cooking, I need to stir constantly like this to make sure there are no burnt parts, nothing sticks to the bottom of the saucepan and the pectin and Nature Mool mixture is properly distributed within the puree and the milk. Okay, so now I have the mixture properly cooked. It was boiling for about 30 seconds. Now I remove it from heat and we'll transfer it into a jug 
to blend with a hand blender. This is an important step in preparing any kind of crema. We need to make sure that we have a good emulsion between fats and liquids. We have fats in the carrot puree, which was made with uh, the addition of butter. We have liquids in carrots themselves and uh, in milk. We need to combine the two to have a really creamy and delicate texture. The emulsifier only is not sufficient. This is why we need to use hand blender as well. After about a minute of blending, the crema is ready. As you can see, it has a perfect smooth texture. It is really shiny now. It has thickened slightly. It is perfect. It is ready. Now I can transfer it into the special molds and we'll freeze it in the freezer. So now when I have the crema ready, I will pour it into the molds as I said before. Here they are. Here I have the cake ring, which is 12 centimeters in diameter. I have prepared it in the following way. Here I have a regular cling film on one side and that's it. There is no acetate inside. However, you can put it inside if you wish. Like this, it will be easier for you to unmold the creme. For one cake, I'll need two cake rings like this. I'll have two layers of the carrot creme and I will pour 100 grams of crema into each cake ring. Now I'll tap the tray gently, like this, to make sure that the layer is perfectly even, and we'll place it in the freezer. The freezing time depends on your freezer a lot, but I would say it will take for about three to four hours to freeze it completely. And then you can either store it for up to one month in the freezer and use it uh, whenever you wish, or once frozen, use it immediately to assemble the cake. After a few hours in the freezer, the carrot creme is ready, it is frozen. Now it is time to unmold it. There are several ways you can do this. Method one is simply to wait a little bit until it starts defrosting and then simply remove the cake ring. Second one is to heat the cake ring a little bit with a blowtorch or a heat gun. Even the hair dryer will work and to release the uh, cake rings if you need the crema faster. So I'll show you how to do it. Simply remove the plastic wrap a little bit and press the creme from the top and lift the cake ring like this. Now I'd like to show you a simple technique which I use to make candied carrots. Here I have the fresh carrot, which is washed. I'll need to cut the edges of this carrot, peel it first, and then cut it into thin slices. I'll use a vegetable peeler for this. I'll show you a bit later how it's done. Then I need a bit of water and sugar to make the simple syrup. When I have the syrup ready, I'll put the carrot strips into the syrup and we'll cook them on low heat for about 15-20 minutes until they turn translucent and soft and after that I will leave them to dry on a tray and once dry I'll shape them. So the technique is simple but it requires some time and some steps in order to achieve the perfect result. So first of all I'll start making the syrup. I'll pour the water into the saucepan Then I add the sugar 
and I'll start warming everything together until the mixture boils and the sugar is completely dissolved. Meanwhile, I'll prepare the carrot. So here it is. I'll cut the edges of it like this. And now using a vegetable peeler, I'll first of all clean it. And then using the same peeler, I'll cut the carrot into long and beautiful strips like this. So the carrot strips are ready now. They look approximately like this. They're flexible and not too thin, but they're neither too thick. Now I'll put them in the syrup, which is ready, and we'll cook them for about 30 minutes, more or less, until they turn translucent and much softer than now. After about 30 minutes of cooking on low heat, the carrots are now properly candied. Now I'll show you how it should look like at this point. As you can see, it is translucent, beautiful and really shiny. Perfect. Now I'll drain it a little bit and we'll put it on the silicon mat and then we'll place it in the oven for 10-15 minutes to dry out slightly. Then I'll be able to shape it beautifully. So now when the carrots are beautifully arranged on the tray, I can put it in the oven at 100 degrees Celsius and uh, dry the carrots for about 10 minutes. The syrup will start crystallizing on the surface. They'll become a bit more firm and I'll be able to twist them to create the decoration. After about 10 minutes in the oven at 100 degrees Celsius, the carrots are ready to be shaped. As you can see, they have dried out slightly, but are still shiny. This is perfect. And if you take them, they'll still be flexible. So now you need to wait just a little bit so the carrots cool down slightly, and then you'll be able to shape them into whatever you wish. Like this, for example. You can twist them, you can roll them, you can do whatever you wish. After shaping the decoration out of the candied carrots, like this, keep it at room temperature. Here on the tray, it will harden, it will cool down completely, and then you'll be able to store it at room temperature and use as decoration. The storage time, as I would say, it, it is quite long, but I would not store it for longer than a week in a closed container. Um, it is better to make the fresh decoration uh, every time you are going to decorate the cake. Now I'd like to show you how to make the chiffon sponge, which will be used as a decoration, as well as a component for the carrot cake. To make the sponge, I will need the following components. The egg whites, two separate portions, the big one to make the meringue with sugar, and the small one to mix with the egg yolks 
oil and honey. I'm using a little bit of honey in this recipe to add some honey flavor to the sponge as well as to keep it moist. If you cannot consume honey, you can use invert sugar in this recipe or you can simply skip it. The sponge will still work really well. Here is the oil. I'm using grapeseed oil in this case since it has neutral flavor, no flavor at all. You can use any type of oil you wish, the one which is available, but which has either a very delicate flavor, which will match with the flavor profile of the cake, or has no flavor at all, like sunflower, for example. Then the egg yolks, I already mentioned them. Uh, they are also here, room temperature. I'll be mixing them with uh, the egg whites, oil and honey. Then the dry ingredients. Here I have the potato starch and all-purpose flour. Then a little bit of baking powder to make it super fluffy. And also a little bit of colorant. I will not be using all. I'll need just a pinch. It's the orange water-soluble colorant which I'll use to color the meringue to make the sponge beautifully orange to complement the, the overall presentation and to make it resemble the carrots. I will start the preparation by mixing the smaller portion of egg whites, egg yolks, the grapeseed oil and the honey in a jug. So first I'll add the egg whites. Then the egg yolks. Then the honey. And the oil. Now I'll blend all these ingredients together using a hand blender. Like this I'll obtain an emulsion, the combination of uh, the oil and the liquid which is present in the uh, egg whites and the egg yolks. The mixture will resemble the mayonnaise. It will thicken, it will turn pale yellow, almost white after blending. And like this I'll have the perfect base uh, to incorporate the meringue into. This will ensure that the sponge is moist soft and really flexible. Okay, so after blending the mixture should be like this. As you can see it has changed its color. Now it is not transparent at all. It is combined. It is perfectly smooth. Great. Now it is ready. I'll transfer it into a large mixing bowl and we'll set it aside for now. Now the next step in preparing the chiffon sponge is to combine the dry ingredients. So here is a small mixing bowl. I'll combine the sifted potato starch sifted flour and baking powder. So here goes the starch, then the flour, and finally the baking powder. Now I need to mix all these ingredients together to ensure the properly mixed, the baking powder is properly distributed within the dry ingredients like this, I'll have the proper leavening and proper rise of the sponge in the oven. Okay, the mixture of dry ingredients is ready. Now I'll add them to the mixture of egg yolks, egg whites, uh, oil and the honey. 
all at once, like this. And now I'll mix everything with a whisk. So the mixture should thicken slightly after the addition of dry ingredients. It will stay shiny and rather liquid at the same time. Like this. Now I'll set it aside and we'll proceed to the final step, to the preparation of the meringue. So here I have the room temperature egg whites, larger portion. I'll add them to the mixer bowl. And then we'll start whipping them in a stand mixer on medium speed and when they start foaming, when a froth will appear on the surface of the egg whites, this is when I'll start adding the sugar gradually. Um, like this, the sugar will dissolve completely, I'll have no crystals of sugar and the texture of the meringue will be perfect. So after a few seconds of whipping, the egg whites have foamed slightly. So at this point, they should look like this. As you can see, there are no signs of any kind of peaks. They're still liquid, but frothy on the surface. This is when I'll start adding the sugar gradually. And also at this point, I will add a little bit of uh, the colorant to the egg whites so that it has time to dissolve. I will add just a little bit on the tip of a knife. And we'll start whipping on medium speed and we'll be adding the sugar gradually. Once all the sugar is added, I'll continue whipping the meringue on medium speed until full volume is reached. The texture has to be smooth, soft, pliable, something like medium stiff peaks. I'll show you the way it has to look like. After about seven to 10 minutes of whipping, the meringue is ready. I'll show you its texture now. It should look like this. It should have a creamy, beautiful and airy texture. Not too stiff. Like this. This is perfect. It will be easy for me to incorporate such a meringue into the first preparation. And it is super airy, it has lots of volume. Like this, the sponge will be light and flexible. So now I'm ready to combine the two preparations. I'll fold a little bit of the meringue into the first preparation. We'll mix it with a spatula to make its texture lighter and a bit thicker. And then I'll pour this mixture back into the meringue and then we'll fold it with a spatula carefully. Like this, I'll preserve maximum volume and it will be easier for me to mix the batter and a large mixing bowl like this. So I take the meringue, I add it here and I mix it with a spatula like this. I'll add a bit more. And now when I have a mousse-like texture here, I'll pour it into the meringue in the mixing bowl. So 
So now the chiffon sponge cake batter is ready. It has the perfect texture. As you can see, it is rather thick, very smooth, shiny, perfect. Lots of air bubbles inside. Lovely. Now, this is ready to be spread on the baking tray and baked. Okay, so to bake the sponge, I'll be using the tray like this. It's a large tray, 40 by 60 centimeters. Here I have the special silicon mat with borders, one centimeter in height. You can bake the sponge directly on the tray with the regular silicon mat or parchment paper. The reason I'm using this special mat is because I have it and it is really convenient to use. It is very easy to spread the sponge evenly. And as you can see, I have several trays over here. One tray with silicon mat on top of the other tray with a silicon mat like this. The sponge will not brown too much. It will preserve its beautiful orange color after baking. Plus, I'll be baking it at a relatively low temperature for the same reason, to preserve the beautiful color without too much browning. So now, I will pour the batter on the tray and will spread it using an offset spatula as evenly as I can. So now after spreading, the sponge is ready to be baked. I'll do this in the oven at 150 degrees Celsius. This is a relatively low temperature for such thin sponges. It is one centimeter thick. So such temperature is because I want the color to stay like this, not change too much. I don't want any excessive browning. This is why the temperature is 150 and the baking time is about 20, 25 minutes. I'm baking the sponge in a convection oven, which means my baking time is normally less than in a regular conventional oven, uh, where there is only the top and bottom heating. So please keep in mind this peculiarity when you bake the sponge at home, if your oven has no fan inside, if there's only top and bottom heating. After 25 minutes in the oven, the chiffon sponge is ready. As you can see, it has risen. It is really fluffy. If you touch it, it will spring back. It means it is perfectly baked. Now there are a few things left to do. I will cover the hot sponge with parchment paper, like this. I will wait for a while until it sticks. During cooling, the moisture will continue to evaporate and to stop this or to block it a little bit, I place the parchment paper on top of the hot sponge like this. I will not need to soak it with any syrup. It will be moist and it will melt in your mouth. The next thing I need to do is to flip the sponge over and leave it like this at room temperature until it cools down completely. After that, I'll be able to cut discs and strips out of it and proceed to assembly.
After a few hours at room temperature, the current chiffon sponge has cooled down completely. Now I can remove the silicon mat and show you its unique texture. As you can see, it has a beautiful color. There is no sign of browning. It is perfect and the texture is super airy and beautiful. It will be a nice decoration for my carrot cake. Now I'll flip it over. I'll place the parchment paper like this, flip it over and we'll remove the parchment paper which is underneath. So now I'm ready to cut the sponge into discs and strips. This recipe makes two cakes. So I'll need to cut two strips 50 centimeters long and six centimeters wide, since I'll be using a 16 centimeter cake ring, which is six centimeters in height. I'll place the sponge inside this cake ring. This is going to be a long strip. And then I'll place discs of the smaller size inside the cake ring. For this, I'll be using a 14 centimeter cake ring to cut the discs out of the sponge. I'll start by cutting strips. I will mark the proper size. So here is a strip one, which I'll be using to line the cake ring, the bigger one. As you can see, it is very flexible and it will go easily inside the cake ring. I'll cut the second one of the same size and then four discs of 14 centimeters in diameter. And now using a 14 centimeters cake ring, I'll cut four discs out of the sponge. Okay, so now I have everything ready to start assembling the carrot cake. Here are the sponges, the carrot creme, and the orange creme. Now I can start the assembling. Here is the cake ring. The recipe makes two cakes, so I have two of them over here on the tray. I'm using a 16 centimeter cake ring, which should have six centimeters in height, but if you don't have such a high ring, this is not a problem. You can use an acetate strip which has to be put inside the cake ring like this. Even if you're using the tall ring, you will still need this acetate to facilitate the unmolding process. So now I'll put the strips of the sponge inside each cake ring. And I'll put the sponges this beautiful side facing outwards so that uh, the part which is not that beautiful, will be inside the cake. So as you see, there is one side of the sponge, one edge, which is overlapping the other one. So they should slightly overlap. So now I'll trim one edge a little bit like this but then I will push one side of the sponge strip 
like this. So you should do it this way to make sure the sponge is properly secured and it will not open up during storage because even if you put the sponge inside, the frosting, the cream, it might still start opening during storing and um, during the process of drying. When you store the cake in the fridge or in the freezer, it dries out with time and when it dries out, it starts opening on this connection part. So make sure you stick this to uh, sides of the sponge really well, like this, it will be properly secured. Then I'll place the disc of the sponge on the bottom. Like this. So now I'll start applying the orange crema. I will mix it first. So now, as you can see, it has slightly jellified texture. So before using, I need to mix it either with a spatula or with a whisk. If you're making lots of cakes, you can even whip it slightly in a stand mixer. So now I transfer the orange crema into the piping bag. After mixing, it should have a texture like this, really smooth and creamy. Perfect. So now I transfer it here. So here I'm using a piping bag with a round tip, about nine millimeters in diameter, but you can also skip the tip, you don't need it. It does not have to be here, so you can simply assemble the cake with a piping bag only. So now I'll pipe about 100 grams of the orange crema on the bottom of the sponge and then we'll place the carrot crema on top. Now I'll take the frozen carrot crema and we'll put it on top of the orange one. like this in the center. Now I'll press it well. And we'll pipe a layer of the orange crema on top to cover the carrot one. After that, I'll place a second disc of the sponge on top of the crema. I'll press it well. I need to make sure it is even. Now I'll pipe another 100 grams of the orange crema on top of the sponge and we'll place the carrot crema on top again. I'll press it well again. Okay, so one cake is ready. I'll do the same process with the second one and then both cakes will be ready for decoration. I'll put them in the fridge for about one hour, 
maybe two hours so that they stabilize and then I'll be able to unmold them and we'll start the decoration process. After spending two hours in the fridge, the carrot cake is now stable and I can remove the cake ring and the acetate and then start the decoration. To remove the ring, there is no special technique. You simply need to lift it and then remove the acetate. Nothing special. There is one last thing left to do before starting to decorate the carrot cakes, is to whip the cream cheese chantilly. Here it is, after stabilization in the fridge, it has jellified slightly, as you can see, but when I mix it, it will turn creamy. So now I'll transfer it into the mixer, we'll start whisking it on medium speed, and we'll whip until it increases in volume, turns light, pipeable, and creamy in texture. I'll show you the texture I'm looking for. It should not be like too stiff. It should be very soft and creamy. Very similar to soft serve ice cream. After about two minutes of whipping, the cream cheese chantilly is ready now. I'll show you the way it has to look like. It should be like this, aerated, creamy, but not too stiff. This is the perfect texture. Now I'll transfer it into a piping bag, which is fitted with a round tip 14 millimeters in diameter. And then I'll be able to start decorating the carrot cakes. So now I have everything ready to start decorating the carrot cake. The cream cheese chantilly is over here. The cakes are stabilized. It is perfect time. So I will pipe the domes of the chantilly cream on top of each cake first. And now I'll finish the decoration by putting some basil leaves and candied carrots. My carrot cake is ready. It looks delicious and festive. The contrast of near-white cream and the chiffon sponge makes the cake stand out. The candied carrot decorations give you hints towards the flavor of the cake. Let's cut the cake open and see what it looks inside. Ooh, lovely! Nice. The rhythm of the white cream Carrot crema and beautifully colored sponge is neat and delicious. The textures look stable and appetizing. The temperature of the cake is cool, around 80 degrees Celsius now. It is perfect for tasting. Let's cut a slice and taste it. Mm. 
Mm. The flavor of the carrot crema is just what's needed to complement the classic combination of the sponge cake and cream. I really like the taste and the texture of it. If you like simple and clear flavors and are looking for an easy to make pastry for your family party or for your patisserie, my carrot cake will please you in both its taste and appearance.